everybody, it's Cash. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. Hello, my darlings. Lovely to see you all. I am in a terrible rush today. I've got tons of stuff to do and very little time to do it in. So I'm just going to pell through these things. There's going to be Lindsey Graham, Marco Rubio, Justin Trudeau, Padre Pio, the guy with stigmata on his hands, a whole bunch of stuff. Welcome to all the new subscribers. A lot of you. I think mainly because of the Rest Easy audio I put up. I am delighted that so many of you enjoyed that and found it uplifting and encouraging and restful and so on. If you haven't seen it, it's the previous video to this one. It's also on my website if you want to go there. Just click on the little man on the homepage and it'll take you right there. Thank you to the donors. You know, I'm always incredibly grateful for your donations. It's so kind of you. Also, oh yeah, could we all just huddle in Correction Corner for a second? Thank you. <laughs> because I do know that the Razorbacks are from Arkansas, not from Alabama. I know you wouldn't think I would know that, but I actually knew it. But unfortunately, the caption in the last video said Alabama, and uh, I was wrong. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, I thought I'd take a look at Lindsey Graham first, because he's slunk into the background, hasn't he? Since he was allegedly re-elected uh, in November. I'm not quite sure how that happened. The pictures said that he was lifted up at the end, mysteriously. Just suddenly, out of the blue, lifted up to uh, re-election. We don't know how that happened. But anyway, so he has been telling Trump, look, you've got to let this election fraud thing go. You've just got to move on. Yeah, well, good luck with that. But uh, I thought I'd take a look at him. He's the senior senator for South Carolina, of course. And he's been in the Senate since 2003. That's a very long time. Particularly for somebody who holds such weird views on things. He is for curbing free speech. He thinks free speech is okay most of the time, but not all the time. He's against same-sex marriage. He was against American troops leaving Afghanistan, but in 2009 he wanted American troops to invade Venezuela. <laughs> he was also opposed to the Mueller report. At the beginning he was very, very anti-Trump, if you remember. He called him terrible names and said, oh my god, you should never vote this guy into power. Then, when Trump got into power, Lindsey Graham goes, oh my god, I really like this guy. We play golf together all the time, he's so much fun. So, basically, Lindsey Graham is a turncoat and a hypocrite. When I went into the energy, he was floating in the air like a blimp. People were looking up at him going, oh, that's Lindsey Graham! That's the guy who plays golf with Trump! But I thought he hated him. Yes, he did, but now he doesn't. He really likes him. How come? Shut up! I'm looking. This is how they were doing it, right? They were all pointing at this guy, and he just floated gracefully over them. But interestingly, up ahead and over to the left, not directly in his path, was this storm cloud I keep on seeing. What is going to happen? I have no idea. But it was there. And he thought, I am not getting involved in that. I am just going to continue on my way. It's almost like he was aware now that the new intake the people who were coming up behind him viewed him, yes, with maybe a certain amount of respect and awe, but as a dinosaur. Just go. You've had your day. Leave, dude. If you're not going to join in our big cloud of fuss, whatever that is, we don't need you. And he sails on by. In fact, luckily, there's a wall. And he manages to go behind the wall and just turn his back on that. That's for the young'uns, for the whippersnappers. It's not for me. And off he goes. But there are two ways to go after a while that will require a choice from him. There's this way, there's that way. This way was all dark. Not sure where that went, but it wasn't good. That might be getting sucked into the whole January the 6th thing and whatever else these insurrectionists do. That might be that way. Or he can go straight ahead into the sunlight. By the way, these pictures were for the next year. 
so this takes us up until next summer and it was almost like yeah I could go that way and get involved in a struggle and a fuss and a fight or I could go this way play golf hang out with my friends or people who claim to be my friends and just have an easy life maybe he resigns at some point or he simply stays in the background as much as possible I was also asked to take a look at Joe Jaworski, who is a trial lawyer from Galveston in Texas. He used to be mayor of Galveston, actually, but now he wants to be attorney general of Texas. When I found him, imagine a wheat field. It's like full of waving wheat, and he was slicing a path through it. Nothing could stop him. He was really dynamic, really determined, lots of powerful intention behind what he was doing. After a while, the ground became a little bumpy. Didn't matter. He had the perfect device for overcoming this. It was a unicycle <laughs> type of device that had, instead of a wheel, a big spigot thing and it could ride over the bumps. It was perfect for it. He was fully equipped for whatever obstacles came his way. Like that, it was really brilliant. And it carried him a long way, this. It took him over the little hills I always see that represent the end of a year. Problem is, on the other side, which I assume means 2022, on the other side, it wasn't bumpy ground in the same way. It was slippery. And his spigot cycle actually slid around everywhere. It wasn't made for the next phase of his campaign. He needed to alter it. He needed new tools. And for some reason, he just kept on. But it was going like this, all over the place. Ugh, why is this not working? Things are going off the rails. He throws down the spigot cycle. I should trademark that. The spigot cycle. Damn thing. Useless piece of equipment. And carries on on foot. But a certain amount of panic has set in. As he approaches the election, the road goes up and then becomes a wall. And he's feverishly going, how do I get over this? This is really too much. Oh my God. And he clambers and he clambers and he gets on top of the wall. And... Further down the wall, there's this group of people. A ceremony is already going on to crown the next Attorney General. And he's late. Sorry, everybody. Oh, my God. I, I, I had a spigot cycle that wasn't working. And, and then I had a hill and a wall. and oh. But he's too late. Unless he can persuade these people to let him in on the ceremony, he's excluded. And it reminded me very much of what happened with Lauren Boebert when she was up against Diane Mitch Bush. Remember that? With the lovely hair? And Diane Mitch Bush had the same kind of problems. And by the time she arrived, they were already crowning Lauren Boebert. How did she get there first? It reminded me of that. So basically, Joe Jaworski could succeed but he's going to have to change his tactics next year. He can't assume that this year's tactics will work next year because it's just not going to happen. I also took a look at Padre Pio, Francesco Fagioni, as his original name was. He's a saint. He died in 1968 and is a bit of a mixed bag, actually, because on the one hand, he was a very, 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 very strict Catholic. On the other hand, he could do all sorts of different things, allegedly, like levitate and bilocate and heal people and perform miracles. And he had, and this was the big thing, he had for, I don't know how many years, like 50 or something, stigmata on his hands, replicating Christ's wounds on the cross and also on his side and so on. There were several investigations of Padre Pio uh, and his stigmata because people thought, what is that then? How did that happen? And uh, they thought, first of all, it's just something he's made up because the mind is so powerful. Uh, they were psychostigmatic, maybe. <laughs> uh, but anyway, some people thought that. But scientists went in and thought, we're going to investigate this. They believed he'd been putting something corrosive on his flesh, like iodine or something, or some kind of caustic acid thing, to 
stop the wounds from healing. And that's why they never went away. But he died in 1968 and was made a saint. And basically people just think it's a miraculous thing that happened to him uh, while he was alive. So I thought I'd take a look at the pictures and they really were very interesting because he was skewered on a sword or a jousting pole or something and he was being used to fend people off. Take that and stab, stab! And all these people fell backwards. Almost like he was a weapon of some kind, maybe making them feel guilty or reminding them of their devotion or feeling shame or something. They all felt a tremendous impact from this guy. He walks across and gets in an elevator, which goes down a couple of floors. He gets out, he walks along a little corridor, and there is a big room with a circular table in it, and there are people sitting at the circular table. And they are pleased to see him. He stands before them, and they go, well done. You did a great job. You have fulfilled your remit. We are pleased with you. Now you may go. And he walked out the door. But I also thought I'd take a quick look at his transition pictures just to see the crossover. Not the whole thing, just the crossover. Looking for clues, really. When I found him, he was being pulled in four different directions by some force or other, but it was dragging him every which way and pulling him apart at the seams. And out emerged the real guy. And immediately all the stresses and strains, the obligations, the beliefs, Everything was gone. And he stepped out and walked away towards the tunnel that I always see in these things with a real spring in his step. Liberated. Free for the first time of all these things, whatever they were. Which I've seen many, many times in different forms. All the mortal stuff we accumulate while we're alive gets shed or taken away from us or rubbed off once we cross over, leaving our pure soul to transition. I wasn't going to do Afghanistan this time because everybody's doing it, but also it's wall-to-wall -wall in the media, I'm assuming. I don't really watch the news or anything, but I'm assuming it's wall-to-wall. -wall. And so I thought, eh, forget that. But I did think I'll take a quick look at the Taliban over the next few months and see what was going to happen there. Because they were largely in charge of Afghanistan for quite a few years, right? Until America came along and invaded after 9-11. And America's been there ever since, basically. Well, the Joe Biden decision has ended that, but uh, what is going to happen now? When I went into the energy, there was a gigantic swarm of bees over there. I mean, huge, like black swarm of bees. And the swarm collected itself and went down this channel, which was etched into the ground, a groove, a rectangular groove. But there were people in there too. And towards the end of the channel, it bifurcated. There were two ways to go. The bees went down the left-hand channel. Down the right-hand channel, some people peeled away and went down there. But both channels led to the same place. The people spilled out into what looked like a... It would be a town square, but there wasn't any way out. There were cliffs on two sides and then a building at the other side. And they all crowded, thousands of them, into this small space. The feeling was of excitement of liberation from a foreign power. Emancipation, not the fear you might expect or the dread, although I'm sure that's present elsewhere. But in this particular square, people were okay for a while. And then suddenly, for some reason, it took longer for the bees to get down their channel than the people. And the bees came out of their channel and swarmed all over the people in the square. And what I thought this meant was they would have to conform. 
The bees wanted them to bow down to their power, to their system, to their beliefs. There had to be compliance and you were okay. So basically, if they conformed, they were fine. But if they didn't conform, then there was no way out. This swarm of bees would descend upon them. They would be made to conform. That's what it felt like. Now, if you remember last time, I did the race in Arkansas between John Bozeman, who's already in Congress, and Jake Beckett, who is an ex-football player, ex-military guy, who's all about the guns and fighting and pro-Trump and so on. It's uh, a dangerous thing to have somebody like him in Congress because he's not about policies. He's simply about doing down the Dems, really. Well, there's a third person in the race at the moment called Jan Morgan, and she is, wait for it, a gun range owner. She's another gun nut, pro-Trump. She was actually at the rally at the Capitol on January the 6th, but left, she says, before the insurrection started. But she is in favour of overturning the election result. So I thought, let's put John Bozeman and Jan Morgan next to each other and see how their dynamic is going to go. Or well, when I went into the energy, there really was no love lost between them at all. She just goes over and kicks him in the back of the knees. <laughs> she just knees him in the back of the leg and he falls to the floor. Oh! And she goes, thank you very much. And off I go to Congress. So he's just left on the ground there. And she marches away, fully confident. She used to be a news anchor and uh, is really quite brilliant, I have to say. Her on-camera persona is very, very convincing. She's got 1980s hair, uh, 1880s values, and uh, 1780s desire for revolution. <laughs> so she's fully equipped for this fight. I followed her down. And there was this ring on the ground attached to a rope that went into the sky. And she knew just what to do with this ring. She slips into it and pulls it up under her armpits. At which point, the rope pulls her away into the sky. She's got help. Somebody wants her to be in Congress. Another gun fanatic. No real policies, just let's fight. Let's have combat against the Dems. Right? Same thing as Jake Beckett. Same thing as so many others who are running for Congress in 2022. She flies over the mountains so easily because she's being lifted up. And when she's put down on the other side... She carries on walking. She's got a bit of a pace to her. She's got confidence. She's got momentum. She fully believes she's going to get this. And there is the finish line. At the last minute, though, John Bozeman, who's got his act together, runs around and stands in front of her. No, 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 no. No, no, no. This is mine. This is mine. You're not coming through. And she simply walks up to him, kicks him in the ghoulies, and as he drops to the ground, declares herself the victor. I've said this before. Something is going on. I don't know what it is, but something is going on. I was asked to do Justin Trudeau, who's coming up for election next month. He's called a snap election because he's got so much to do. He needs to know if the country is behind him. He is the son of Pierre Trudeau who used to be Prime Minister of Canada. He's an ex-teacher, he's an ex-charity worker, and he used to be the director of the Canadian Avalanche Association. <laughs> so quite naturally, he went on to lead the country. Ah, I had a look at him to see what was going to happen. And when I found him, he was on a hill, putting something on his foot. Not absolutely sure what this was. It looked like a snowshoe type thing or some kind of wooden disc. But he was attaching it to his foot and he stood on it. Once he was ready, he looked at the gulf that was in front of him and goes, Ah, oh, it's now or never. Here we go. And he throws himself off this 
hilltop slides down on its little wooden disc, whatever this thing is, and has quite a lot of velocity to him as well, so there's a lot of energy to this. He goes along, he goes along, and at some point there is a flat surface that he goes BAM into. <laughs> this must be the election itself. BAM! But because he had built up such momentum ahead of time, it doesn't stop him. He slides across the top of it, and it even carries him up the other side of this ravine until he's able to just spring on the top. Pierre! And he's fine. He didn't slide, he didn't slip, he didn't seem to be in danger. I could be wrong, but everything seemed to go according to plan, except for this thing where he smacks into this wall. But even then, no matter what that was, opposition, I assume, it didn't stop him. He still continued over the top and up, which is very interesting. He uh, kind of leads a minority party. I don't think had the popular vote last time, so you would think he actually might get voted down this time. But uh, I don't know. The picture suggests that he has tremendous momentum and um, could do okay. And finally, I was asked to do pictures for Marco Rubio and Val Demings in Florida, who are going to be uh, battling it out in the midterms next year. I've done them before, if you remember, and honestly, uh, Val Demings didn't seem to do very well in those pictures. So I thought it was worth doing them again, because so many people were disappointed. They all wanted Val Demings to succeed. And I thought, yeah, maybe I was wrong, or maybe the energy has changed. I should look again. And he was, this is very much like Mad Max Fury Road, but he was stuck to the front of a truck with spikes in his back, like three spikes. And wherever this truck went, it just had Marco Rubio on the front of it. Yes! Yes! Take that! I'm Marco Rubio! It had a fight element to it, but almost involuntary, like he was on the hook for something. He would get off, but these spikes were stuck in his back. We need you, Marco. You gotta run, Marco. You gotta do it again. You are essential to this race. Otherwise, Val Demings might win. Come on, Marco. And there's leverage. These spikes seem to represent leverage. But the weird thing was that he didn't feel good about this. There was apprehension. There was reservation. He just felt like if he had a free choice, he wouldn't go through with this. He would change his mind or he would get himself off the spikes and walk away and do something else instead. But because he's on the hook, for whatever reason, there are forces that are in control of the situation that have nothing to do with him. So I put him and Val Demings together. And she walks over to him and grabs him by the cheeks the way you would a school child and go, oh, you look beautiful today. Yes, go and have a great day. Yes, comb your hair. Yeah, 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 you're fine. Yeah, yeah, let's wipe your lips. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, good. Okay, now go. Here's your lunch, go. A little condescending. Marco Rubio, needless to say, didn't approve of this treatment at all. But he had his own path to walk on which was smooth and went straight into the distance. Val Deming's path wasn't smooth at all. She's a Democrat trying to become a senator for Florida. It was bumpy. And what's more, there was a hill coming up, a challenge. By the time she gets into next year, she will have faced considerable obstacles, including what came up over, I'm guessing the summer next year, the spring, summer, fall, that cloud again that I always see, that was perched over the landscape. They both walk into it, Marco Rubio on his smooth path, Val Demings on her rough path. And Marco Rubio just kind of sails through. It's not pleasant, but he sails through it. Val Demings, on the other hand, on her bumpy road, she had a real hard time. You would swear that there were people throwing things, or well, this gale whipped up and tried to force her off the path. It was really, really uncomfortable. Marco Rubio emerges at the other side. No Val Demings. It's very quiet back there. He goes, hmm, 
Where is she? And I couldn't get her to reappear out of this thing. I don't know what happened, but uh, she didn't reappear. Again, I don't do winning or losing. Anything could happen. But something takes place next year. Maybe it's just the sheer fierceness of the competition. But whatever it is, it could bring Val Demings down. And she won't know what that is yet until she gets into next year. And that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I may do a video on Saturday. I may not. I haven't decided yet. But I'm definitely taking off next week. I need to rest my brain and my eyes. And in the meantime, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be great. Like, share. Oh, if you would share the audio I did the other day, you know, this resting easy, the sleep thing. The more people share and watch that, the more encouraging it will be to do more of them. Because usually when I do videos that aren't to do with politics or whatever, very few people watch them. But uh, if people watch this and they share it, I may do more. It's up to you, really. I'll just go by consumer demand. <laughs> but in the meantime, guys, thank you very much. I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.